What's up, y'all? In today's video, you'll see exactly what it takes to get drafted. We had NFL head coaches, NFL vets come and speak to the team. Stay tuned and watch the whole video to see if you have what it takes to get drafted to the NFL. Okay, on behalf of NFL Draft Day today, right? Yes, sir. A lot of guys get drafted. We praying for our guys over the next two, three days. They are that uh, one of our guys, few of our guys, be taken in the upcoming draft, and we know they brought to the table. We're praying for them, but we want our coaches to really honestly tell you what the NFL is looking for. We got a plethora of coaches that have come from the NFL ranks, and they know exactly what they're looking for. Some of you may be uh, misdirected in what they think. Receivers, y'all think you catch 100 balls, you're going pro. That ain't true. You get 100 sacks, you're going pro. You throw for five, six thousand yards, you're going pro. I guarantee you, we Google right now, <laughs> who's the guy that threw for the most yards in college football, I guarantee you he ain't get drafted tonight. I guarantee you, we Google who had the most catches in college football, I guarantee you, he's not getting drafted today. And so forth. So you need to understand what it takes to get to the next level. And just so happens, we have several coaches that understands that. And after that, Coach Kelly's going to do his thing, and we're going to go out and have the best day of practice that we have ever had. Let's start. So I, I was involved in this process at all different levels for about 25 years. So I've been through 25 loops of this. And this is the week. It's not really the day anymore. This is the week where a whole new group of players uh, joins the league. So as members of a staff, what you were charged with doing is finding out as much as you could about each player because even if you don't draft them, somewhere along the line he may become a free agent. Mm -hmm. And so everybody is out looking for all the information and it's hard to get to that level, right? And here's what we're looking for when you're looking for an NFL player. All right, general requirements. Eventually, it all comes down to do you love the game? If you're a guy that loves the game, do you love what's happening today as much as what's going to happen on Saturday, right? Do you love the game or do you just love what the game will do for you? So what's your story? And somebody's going to find out what your story is. Grit, perseverance, and toughness. Most sports uh, ask for this. In our sport, it's required, right? So the NFL looks for individuals who faced adversity and overcame, right? Coachability. This is huge because no matter what position you play, at some point, the person in charge is going to ask the position coach, do you want to coach this young man? That's what it comes down to. So we're looking for individuals who aren't sensitive. Say that again, say that again, coach, please. Where the NFL is looking for individuals that are not sensitive, all right? The NFL is looking for individuals who understand coaches are here to fix problems and not attack people, right? Coaches and staff live their lives to help their players become the best versions of themselves. And so we want players that understand that, all right? Football intelligence. Do you generally do the right thing on the field all the time? And then the last piece is, are you a good teammate? This is a team sport. It's the ultimate team sport. Do you understand your job and do you trust that your teammates are going to do theirs, right? And are you unselfish and team driven? So. All of you are going to get evaluated, and all of you are going to walk around with a grade relative to these really bullet points. Next one. How do teams find information? Uh, well, every team has administrators. Uh, every team has an officer roads, and they look at everything about you. They'll go back to your hometowns. They'll go to your college town. They're going to talk to everybody involved. They'll look at your social media, right? If in your social media you're, you're displaying things of uh, selfish behavior, illegal behavior, non-team thought, they're going to highlight it and there's going to be a conversation. Key intangibles, you get completions beyond being, having the skill and ability. And I have all this data, so come see me regarding each player, right? Uh, if you get completions, right? When you're do you, uh, your touchdown to interception ratio, Yards per attempt, sack avoidance, scrambling rushing yards, right? But ultimately, if you're a quarterback, have you helped your team win games? All right, next one. The intangibles, if you're a quarterback, right? Lead and direct your offense and the team as a whole. Get your team in the end zone multiple times or as many times as you need to to win the game and then obviously help your team get victories. 
To be a quarterback in the league, you have to be an elite decision maker, which means you understand matchup, space, leverage, and numbers. You have to have a sense of timing, right? When to throw and when to go. Pocket awareness, right? So if you want to be a quarterback in the league, you have to have these. Accuracy, ball placement and touch. We talk about it all the time. And then obviously, and this is big, is your off-schedule production. Some of the biggest plays in the league, and we see uh, Patrick Mahomes and these guys do it on the regular, are when you're out of the pocket, right, taking a downfield look at somebody, deep to middle to short, making a play off schedule. All right, next one. Running backs, right, coach asked me to do this. Grit, toughness, and durability. Must possess a strong combination of mental quickness, confidence, and work habits. Athleticism and a sense of vision. Can you see the hole and get in there? Contact balance. Can you stay on your feet when somebody's knocking you around? Can you break tackles and hold up in pass protection? Your productivity, and this is the point that Coach was making. It's not the number of carries, man. In fact, a fresher running back is more attractive to the NFL. They love guys that come from a running back group that takes a village to win with. They love that. What they want to see is what you do with each carry. There we go. Five yards per carry. And if you don't have five yards per carry, there's a conversation. They want to find out why, right? There could be some reason, but basically do as much as you can with the, product, with the opportunities you get. And then ball security. If you're a fumbler, there's going to be a conversation and most often you don't get you don't win that one. Next one. Running backs, gotta be multi-dimensional, right? If you want to play on three downs, you gotta be able to do three things. You gotta be able to run the ball, you gotta be able to pass protect, and you need to be able to catch. If you can't do all three, you can't play on all three downs. And then the last point for all players really, uh, other than <coughs> quarterbacks. You have to show that you can have a winning production on special teams. If you're a second or third back, you're a core four-teamer or a, a face, uh, four-face uh, special teams guy. Next one. Tight ends. Same thing. Grit, toughness, and durability. You got to be smart. You got to block like a lineman and catch passes like a receiver. Winning performance on special teams. And then one other point I'll make on tight ends. Next slide, and then I'm done. Most tight ends, are you a blocker or are you a pass receiver? All right? Most often, it's rare when you see both. All right? So if you're a blocker and you see yourself as a blocker, become a dominant blocker, if you want to be in the NFL, and a dependable pass receiver. If you're a pass receiver, you have to be a dominant pass receiver and a dependable blocker. And there's a place for both of you. Because a guy that can do both at a high or elite level is rare. And those are the dudes picked in the top five. All right? So, that's it for me. But if you want to be an NFL player, you have to be productive. You've got to be unselfish. You've got to do the most with what you're given the ability to do. Right? And you've got to be an outstanding teammate. And ultimately, you need to love the game. And if you don't love the game, Right? Somebody's going to find that out and they're going to have a discussion about you. And you will not be able to be a part of this great thing called the draft this week. That's it. What's the line of looking for intelligence? All right, you can't play this position if you're not smart. All right, us as coaches cannot teach you how to block somebody if you don't know who to block. All right, so if we get out here and we spend all this time working on technique and doing all this and we don't know who to go to, we're wasting everybody's time. All right, so we have to be able to, they look at that to see, do he know where he's going? The inside zone is inside zone, outside zone is outside zone. They can look at it and see we're in three by one and know we're supposed to be pushing that tackle to that guy. All right, they know it. All right, toughness and physicality. All right, your best ability is your availability. You have to fight through day-to-day -day injuries in order to compete. All right, something is going to hurt every day. You're never going to be 100%. <laughs> I'm not 100% right now. A lot of guys in this room ain't 100%. But continue to fight through it, right? I thought my middle name was contusion for a little bit. Got a contusion every other week, right? You get a knee and knee, need a helmet, whatever it is, fight through it, all right? Nobody can take you out of practice except for Coach Prime, all right, and AP, the trainers. That's it. I'm not the guy to come to, okay? So they're looking for guys who can compete every day. 
all right? Flexibility and, and uh, versatility and flexibility, all right? Have the ability to play multiple positions, all right? Only eight offensive linemen on the NFL game day roster. Well, all say right? that, Coach. Say that. Please say that. Only eight offensive linemen on the NFL game day roster, all right? So the more you do, the better. Guys come and say, well, I play left tackle. I play right. I play guard. I play this. All right? The more you put on tape, all right, the more you can do. Because one of those guys, all right, is has to gonna be able to play both tackles. One of those guys is gonna have to be able to play both guards, and one of them better be able to snap. All right, so you have to be able to do multiple things, and the more you can put on tape right now, the better it is for you in the future. Next one. All right, these are the intangibles. <clears throat> Coach talked about high football IQ, knowing where you're going, knowing how to get there. All right, passion for the game. All right, passion for the game, not just playing the game just because, because if you're playing it just because, you won't be there very long. All right, you have to have a passion for the game, but really love to do what you're doing. All right, durable, talk about it. Competitive, wanting to compete. All right, wanting to compete, knowing that when you come in there, there are no starters. All right, we're going to fill the room the way we can. Confident, all right, confident. Being confident to be able to, we call two and 300 jet, that I'm going to jump a guy because I know the quarterback's going to get the ball out quick, and I'm going to switch up my set on the guy. Put that stuff on tape. All right, and then this right here is obviously a non-negotiable, especially an offensive line, a good finisher. All right, you play through the whistle. Not to the whistle, you play through the whistle. All right, and then leadership traits. All right, Coach talked about it right now with Jimmy, right? Offensive line, right, as a unit, when we come in here, we are the leaders just automatically. All right, that's just how it goes up front. So you see somebody with a hat on, check them. You see somebody with earrings, check them. They're going to ask all those things to everyone in this room, okay, when they come up here and check on you. With the college, I don't know how many of these guys had what you guys have right now as far as the experience and knowledge in this room. So you are in the perfect place. I've always told guys, particularly since I've been here, this is the perfect training ground to prepare you for the next level. Yes, sir. Perfect training ground. The perfect training ground. Coach Prime mentioned it earlier about production. That doesn't matter. It's gonna be it's gonna come down to the intangibles. And as you can see, for every position, there are all the same intangibles. What you guys need to understand is once you leave college, it is no longer a game. It's a business. And you have to understand the business, and the intangibles are the business. Okay? You have to understand the business. Now, every year as a receiver group, we always get this book. I get this book, and we talk about the top receivers in the league, and we talk about strengths and weaknesses. Okay? This is not what we're going to talk about, because that doesn't matter when it comes down to the business. What matters when it comes down to the business is the intangibles, selfishness. Are you a team player? Coach mentioned it. They're going to do their investigation on you, on and off the field, selfishness. A leader in the locker room. Are you a leader in the locker room? <clears throat> Are you a leader in your position? Are you a leader on the team? Play special teams. Can you make a difference on special teams outside of your position if you're not a starter? All right? Are you smart? Now listen. Some of these things, this man stand up here and talk about every single day. That's why I still refer to this as the perfect training ground. You get four years of this experience to prepare you for that, for that opportunity, because it ain't guaranteed, okay? Character, are you smart? Are you disciplined? Are you tough? Do you love football and are you married to it? Do you love it and are you married to it? That's a commitment, okay? Can you say no to the people you love the most? I've heard him say that. The people you love the most, you're going to have to say no to. Everybody in this room that's played this game or coached this game has made family sacrifices. I got to go. I ain't going to be here for birthdays and weddings and all that kind of stuff. I, ain't got, I can't do this and do that. Can't do them both. You have to say no to the people you love. Are you willing to do that? Good practice habits. Do you practice like it's a game? They value that. Can you, can you learn the system? Are you a rep guy? Do we have to keep repeating ourselves like we do in here? Continually, okay? Good grades. There's been a study a few years ago when I was at the University of Houston. There was a study made. Guys with college degrees played on average five years, five years longer than guys that didn't. That's an investment, okay? Play hard away from the ball. It has an every play evaluation. Play hard away from the ball. There's an every play evaluation. Your coaches are telling you defense, run to the ball. Offensively, we're telling you finish. Receivers, I'm saying, continue your block downfield. There's an every play evaluation. And last thing, 
So it won't be the last if I'm talking. Are you a winner? Yes. Are you a winner? Huge. Did you win here? Or do you have a history of winning where you've been? It's important. Huge. You need to understand that. This is the perfect training ground, fellas. There's no better place. I've been doing this for a long time, and I can tell you, you are getting everything you need on a daily basis from every coach, starting with this leader right here, every coach, every administrator in this room. It's valuable information. And I'll say this. Every time somebody get up here in front of you, you guys have two opportunities. Confirm what you already know. When somebody says something, you know that, because I see a lot of you think and take this for granted because you know it already. It confirms what you already know, or it's an opportunity for you to learn something new. That's it. Now we don't have the 10th round no more. So don't think it's about production, fellas. It's about the intangibles. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Because it means you got to be smart, you got to be a, a applicable knowledge. That means can you apply? Can you apply what you've learned in the meeting room and take it to the field? That's what we're looking for, guys that we can coach in the room and then turn around and it shows up what we're coaching on the practice field every day. Use your tools. What does that mean? I got to use my hands in football. These are our weapons. These are our tools. We got to be able to lock out. We got to be able to have contact balance. Got to be able to get off blocks and separate and make plays. Can you trust what you see? What you see in the meeting room, what you took upon yourself of watching film and studying and being a pro, can you take those things and use it out on the field? Can you use your instincts? Can you see things? Can you see formations that alert you to what's coming because we went over it in the film and have the opportunity to go out and make plays to make a difference in a game? Because defensive ends, let's be honest, you have to be a difference maker for your football team if you want to get to the league and sustain a career in the NFL. Next slide. Tough. Got to be dependable. Got to be dependable. What is that? Dependable is doing right. Not when you want to, but doing right all the time. If you have a stunt, you have to execute the stunt. You have to know if I got a two-way go versus fast or versus wrong, I got to be in the B gap. We have to make sure that we're dependable in doing our job. One of 11. Got to do your job. Available. Availability. Ain't no ability like availability. You got to play through things. We all got to play through things. You're going to play through pain, ankles, shoulders. It does not matter. When it's time to roll on Sunday, we got to go. We have to trust that when we put you out there on the field, you're going to be ready to go and you can uh, go out and produce for your teammates. Reliability. Am I reliable? Am I reliable? When the game is on the line, am I going to show up? In the first quarter, am I going to show up? In the second quarter, is he going to show up? You have to be a reliable football player. Next slide. Fifth, got set edges, man. Defensive ends, we got set edges. We are the edge of the defense. We keep everything inside in the run game. Everything. And then, meet pullers with bad intentions. Are you going to Check out, or you gonna check in. When the big guards come, hey, they got a family to feed too. They come breathing heavy, smacking up. What you gonna do in return? Are you gonna set the edge? Are you gonna put guys back in the gap? Are you gonna do what's required for our defense to be successful? And then, you gotta be a relentless rusher. You gotta show up when it's time to show up. Third down, win football games. You just heard coach got over here and talk about quarterbacks getting out of the pocket, making plays on extended plays. It is our job for those plays not to be extended. Keep the quarterback in the pocket. And we got to rush. And I know Coach Sapp's going to get up here and talk, but you got to be able to rush and play with your teammates unselfish football. That's why you have to be able to put hands on people. That's why you got to be able to put hands on blocks, put hands on pullers, because you got to be unselfish in this game. You got to love this thing more than you love anything at some point. That's the way it goes. It takes everything that you have to be a great football player in the play on the next level. Here we see it. Smart, tough, disciplined character. You heard Coach Taylor. They're going to they ask you about your third grade teacher. They ask Miss Williams about me, my third grade teacher. I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> but it's going to be what it's going to be. They're going to dig all the way in, and they're going to ask you, who are you, what are you, and what are you about? And we always talk about what Dealer was talking about, all that. Dependable, ability, all that, let me show you some tape. Because what y'all talk about with me, and I said minimum wage, 
this is why I've been on wage because this is what it's got to look like. You got to play this game like your mama's retirement is on it, your kids' tuition, the place you live, the food on your table. You understand what I'm saying? Love this game and autograph your performance. When you get in this thing, you go at it. You go at it play after play after play. Because this is what it's about. This is why you're here. This is why you came. This is the training ground for this league. And you see Nebraska like this here? We buff, right? We don't get on them like white on rice. You hear me? White on rice. You want, them to, you want the world to see you? Take it over from the beginning to the end. Start fast, finish strong, autograph your performance, fellas. Please, this is why we're here. Let's go. How do you stand out even individually here is how you will advance, right? Because it is their job to come back with less, not more, right? So once they look at it, right, they're gonna look at linebackers and say, do you love the game? Right, you gotta understand on the average NFL roster, there's five or six backers, and that's it. Right, so you got two starters. The next guy's gotta wear a C playing special teams, and the other two, right, they gotta be war daddies. They gotta love the game, right? What it gives. Excuse me. They have to love the game more than what it gives them. Does that make sense, to everybody? Yep. They gotta be the ones that are running through a wall for it. Right. It starts there. Right. Next one, please. Right. Uh, in terms of on the grass, right, you gotta have instincts to find the ball. Right. They're always looking for production. If you don't make a lot of tackles here, you're not going to make them on the next level, right? You got to have a feel for blocking patterns, how linemen are going to get up to you, and we'll watch a couple of clips here, right? So obviously the best guy in the league right now, right? He's wearing number 54 as we see it, right? So again, he has a great feel for what's coming up to him, right? As the whole thing, right? We're making the TFL, right? On to the next one, please, right? You got to have coverage ability. We can't hide everybody, right? So you got to be able to cover a tight end or cover a back, preferably on third down. Right? We can do some stuff on early down to make you thug it out in the run game, right? but you gotta be able to cover. right? That's a non-negotiable here. Next one, please. Right? So again, same guy. Right? I believe he's the highest paid guy for a reason. So here he is walking out on number three, vertical carry. Right? Pretty good from the same guy that just stopped the run. Right? Next slide, please. Right? You gotta have the ability to tackle in the open field. The days of a middle linebacker playing in between the tackles, that doesn't exist, right? Jet motion here, fly motion there, right? You gotta make plays outside the numbers, right? So uh, everything you're working on in the summer, right? In the off season, long stride, short stride, come to balance. That's why we do so much open field tackling stuff, really for all parties involved, so you can show it on Saturdays, right? Next slide, please. All right, so again, same guy uh, with the jet motion here. All right, next slide, please. All right, so again, for the safeties, right? Next slide. Um, you got to be the vocal mouthpiece of the secondary, right? So you got to get everybody else going. The hard thing for our safeties, you might have to look out to a corner who possibly might have a gold jacket on and say, hey, we're going to check this, right? We're going to check that. You got to be the quarterback of the defense, especially on the back end. Everything goes through you. You got to communicate every play, right? So you got to be the go getter, the alpha that can lead that group both vocally as well as physically, right? Because it is a physical game, especially. Next slide, please. Right? You gotta have instincts, right? You gotta be able to key and diagnose and take the proper angles to the ball, right? You are the fireman. You gotta put out fires in the run game as well as the pass game. Right? So I gotta be where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. Next slide, please. Right? So again, run game or pass game alike, we gotta be able to go get this thing. So they wanna see you make plays deep in space, as we see there. Right? Next slide. Right? And you gotta be interchangeable, right? So you gotta have the ability to not only make plays in the deep end, right, but to play in the box. We can't hide everybody. We can't put you in the post uh, and leave you in the post. You gotta play, be able to play in the box and be physical in the run game. Next slide, please. All right, so again, 24 here, we'll see them fitting in the run game as we get this thing going. All right, so you gotta be able to do that, right? Make a TFL, same guy next game, right? And then make an interception, right? If you don't have a lot of interceptions in college, hate to break it to you, you're not gonna have a lot in the league. That's just the way it goes. Right, so again, same guy, two yards behind the line of scrimmage, 65 yards down the field. Right, so that's how you get paid, that's how you get drafted high. That's how, again, you do what you wanna do, get to where you wanna be. Talking about the cornerbacks, uh, cornerbacks are probably the most uh, versatile position when you talk about draft, uh, draft day. But uh, where the, here's what they see first, all right? They don't see your height. It's 186 corners in the NFL. This is what it is. You got two 5'8 guys, 5'9, you got 13. Uh, 
510, but the average is six, six foot, right? So we go six foot is what they're looking at, 511 and 61, and then you go down from there, all right? Next slide. Hey, when, when they looking at this stuff right there, being where you, where you are on, the, on that height scale, you have to do something special. If you're not in that six foot, six one, uh, five eleven, you have to be special in something. What do you do good? Can you run? Do you get the ball? Are you a smart corner? Are you a zone corner? Can I play zone? Can I play uh, man also? What do you do special? All right, because there's only 186 corners in the NFL, right? So you have to have something special about you to make them want to have you on your team. And whatever that is, it's going to be different from everybody. But you have to be special in order to play at the next level, all right? When I talk about special, next day, next slide. Are you a competitor? Only one, only one on the field. I'm not, I'm not taking away anything from other positions. Only one on the field that has to compete every play. Yes, sir. The spotlight is on him every play. If he gets beat, guess what? Everybody knows he gets beat. Quarterback throwing this session, it could be it could be receiver, you know what I'm saying? He got pressure in his face, it ain't always on him. But when you get beat, and when you gotta compete every play, they know if you win or loss. Every play is known. Everybody knows. Alright? So they wanna look at this film and they wanna see how you compete. Next. Do you want the smoke? And that film don't lie. Do you want that smoke? They're going to look at that film. They're going to watch the games that you play against, people you're supposed to dominate. Do you dominate those guys? That's right. Is that what you do? When you're playing against uh, uh, top competition, what do you do every play? Are you locked in every play? That's what they're looking for. Are you locked in every play? Do you only play when you play top competition? What do you do on first down? What do you do on third down? Do you want that smoke at the end of the game? Mm -hmm. Do you want that ball? That's what they look at. That's what this film. That's what that film shows. That film shows if I want if I want that ball, I wish they would throw the ball to me. I hope they don't throw the ball this way. That's what they look for. They want that guy to wish they throw that ball that way. So when we talk about corners, man, it's a, it's a variety of things that they're looking for. But they want to know: Are you a competitor? What do you do special? And at the end of the game, can they count on you when the ball coming your way? I heard Shadur say this to a recruit we were talking to the other day, and I got so excited because we got a player talking about it. He said, and I'm paraphrasing it, but basically at the end of the day, bro, we're just looking for dudes who can help us win. Because if we win, we all eat. And I got so excited about that because we in a world right now when everybody got to get the bag, the problem is we have to do a better job of teaching you how to get the bag, and then you got to do a better job of executing. Let me tell you the number one most important, most critical element when it comes to you and your future, if you truly want to play in the NFL, how to get there. NFL draft starts tonight, fellas. DK don't make the figures. It is what it is. Top 50 prospects on the ESPN board. That's the, that's, that's the information we use to do this. Of the top 50 prospects, only four come from a program with a losing record. And of those four that had a losing record, None of the top 30 prospects came from a team with a losing record. Of the four teams that had a losing record, three of them were five and seven. The other one was six and seven. They lost in a bowl game to prevent them from having a winning record. Bottom line. The NFL, one of the coaches said it is a business. I think it was Coach Phil, Coach um, Jay Field. The NFL is a business. And with all businesses, it's about being, it's about winning. Winners want winners. 
If you truly want to get there and you're truly willing to do whatever it takes to get there, win.